Hello. So, in this uh, lecture, we will uh, look at biological analysis. So, we have covered the sampling techniques or sampling methods. Now, we will look at the methods of analysis, uh, specifically the culture based methods. So, uh, you know, we have already looked at this. So, as a recap, we can select our samples. Uh, sampler considering the viability and the type of organism to be sampled, the compatibility with the selected method of analysis, then the sensitivity of bioparticles to sampling, expected concentrations and particle size, volume of air to be sampled and the duration of sampling, the storage and transportation of sample. We also tried to see what would be, you know, consider what could be the contaminants and sources, what are the ambient conditions, what are the collection efficiency of the sample, what are the manpower requirements, what are the sampling costs and other reliability checks and other auxiliary necessities in the sampling such as we, we may need vacuum pumps, uh, electricity and water. Now, once all this sampling is done, we have to go for the analysis methods. So, strategies to evaluate indoor concentrations are aimed at the comparison of exposure data with background levels or comparison of exposure levels of symptomatic and non-symptomatic persons or buildings or between buildings with and without the biological particles. So now we need to have approaches. One is the quantitative approach, which means involving comparisons of concentrations and the qualitative approaches, which involve comparisons of species or genres of microbes. And to do this kind of analysis, we have the culture based or the non-culture based methods. In the culture based methods, we have methods like microscopy, MPN determination, MARDI TOF and LIBS LIBS. Then we also have non-culture based methods which include epifluorescence, PCR, flow cytometry, metagenomics and electrophoresis. First, we will look at the culture based methods. So, in culture based, culture based methods, as the first steps, the microbes have to be transferred from air onto the surface of the appropriate culture medium. So, this we have already uh, seen in the previous uh, lecture. This can be achieved through several of the sampling methods such as impaction or impingement. Now, the collected sample which is in our culture medium, it is incubated at optimal temperature. So, now we have the bacteria and we want to give them uh, bacteria of uh, uh, we want to give them appropriate uh, conditions for them to form colonies which we can then maybe are able to see or detect easily so we want to give the optimum conditions for the bacteria to grow and form colonies so in addition to our cultural medium which included all the nutrients we will incubate them at the optimal temperature so that colonies are formed and then we count the number of colonies that are formed. So, as a result the, the outcome or the outcome result is given as colony forming units per meter cube of air. So, CFU per meter cube. These methods only detect microbes that are viable because and are 
grown upon the medium used because we our whole process relies on incubation of these bacteria so that they form colonies and they can do that only when they are uh, or by microbes to form colonies which can only happen when they are viable so the method detect only those microbes that are viable and grow upon the medium that is used compounds such as beta betain and catalase can be supplement to the culture media for minimizing the influence of unfavorable conditions for the life of microbes during the sampling so we can add supplements to the culture media to make sure that the micro viable microbe remains viable so our uh, colonies of microbes were given as colony forming units viruses are generally expressed as plaque forming units pfu per meter cube now when a virus is transferred onto a single on a surface of a single layer culture it penetrates the cells then reproduces within them and after cell destruction attacks the neighboring cells so the areas around the initial places of cell infection get cleared of cells these are called plaques now analyzing the viruses differs uh, significantly from the methods utilized for other organisms because they only can develop in living cells species identification of detected viruses consists of performing of electrophoresis or using anti serum that contains antibodies of common viruses for analysis of viruses it is important to take large quantities of air into the sampler because the uh, concentration or the amount of viruses is usually very small so this method involves drawing large quantities of air which is essential as the amount of viruses in air is small especially when we are looking also at the enteroviruses now cultivation of microorganisms assumes that all viable fractions can be will actually grow so we want to get the viable fractions so we need to have the right conditions that all of them grow so now the cultivation of microorganisms assumes that all viable fractions in the biozoon will grow on the selective medium so improper choice of sample collection method can cause loss of cell viability and thus they will not grow so making it difficult to cultivate in such culture based methods there is also problems with overlapping colonies or cell aggregates which then lead one leads one to underestimate the colony counts not difference different growth patterns of microbes can result in overlooking of slow growing microbes because we may count the fast growing microbes and the slow growing ones may not have even grown sufficiently to be counted we also have difficulties in identifying specific microbial taxa cell debris dead microbial cells and other microbial components that may have toxic or allergic allergenic properties may not be detected by the cultivation because we are only looking at for example viable bacteria or viable microbes so dead cells will anyways not be counted by cultivation because they cannot be cultivated the next set of methods are microscopic methods in this methods the trapped micro mic, microorganisms which were on the air and are now trapped on 
a membrane filter or glass with the sticky substance this microorganisms are stained and then are sent for microscopic examination microscopic examination may help in identifying the uh, taxa although this identification is primarily based on the morphology of the cultivated microbe the results can be obtained like as number of microbes in 1 meter cube of air the advantages of such microscopic methods are that we can detect microbes living or even dead that do not abundantly flourish in culture medium it is possible that these microbes were not able to form uh, you know easily detectable colonies which these microbes can now be observed in a microscopic method and when the microbes are dead they cannot be cultivated but they can be detected in the microscopic method these methods also allow for detection of fungal spores and organic debris there is also the possibility of quantifying the biological agents such as plant pollen allergenic mites dust or bi biological le laden dust and others one of the drawback is the inability of such methods to be able uh, inability of such methods to characterize the species of the microbe then the next method is the determination of the most probable number this is a technique for quantifying viable organisms in liquid samples this is generally done by making ten fold dilutions of the liquid broth growth so this by replicating the liquid broth growth in ten fold dilutions this test is useful if samples contain particulate matter that interferes with the plate count enumeration methods the mpn test procedure entails sequential dilution of the sample in order to quantify the microbial density via incubation of the microorganisms this technique has a high detection capability because the liquid medium does not allow for the probe of stress on the collected sample particles the next method is the matrix assisted laser desorption ionization time of flight so m a l d i t o f in this method the desorption or ionization technique is used to analyze biomolecules which are the larger ionic molecules that become fragile upon ionization this maldi is a two step synthesis process process in which the laser beam cause desorption and ablation so the hot plumes containing ionized matrix of the protonated deprotonated of the protonated deprotonated matrix and nano droplet clusters are produced during ablation time of flight is typically used to predict large mass molecules and is used in conjunction with maldi which reflects ions using an electric field doubling the ion path and increasing the resolution so for maldi top accordance in accordance with the sample collection 
a light beam is directed at the selected colony of the species. This is overlaid by a matrix that generates mass spectra and this mass spectra are then analyzed and compared to the available database to determine the precise marker. The process's main limitation is that it can only identify taxa larger than 600 dI in size such as pores, proteins, peptides. So here we have the laser coming directly on our colony. Then it leads to the formation of matrix ions, neutral analyte molecule, analyte ion and neutral matrix molecule and this is then detected. The next method is laser induced fluorescence. The LIF technique assesses the structure of molecules along with the detection of selective species. The environment samples are cultured and excited by a laser beam of a specific wavelength. So then the species is excited. The species then de-excites and emits light in a fraction of a second which is then recorded by the photomultiplier tube or the photodiode. So the species is excited then it when it de-excites it emits light which is then observed and recorded. Because of the detection sensitivity and absorbance, even in the darker conditions and orientations, the technique may outperform the spectroscopy technique. The next method is laser induced breakdown spectroscopy or LIBS LIBS. In this process, the laser is focused onto a small area at the surface of the specimen. It then removes a very small amount of material or it is focused on a very small amount of material in nanograms to picogram range. This then generates a plasma plume with temperature of the order excess of 1000 Kelvin or 1 lakh Kelvin. At these high temperatures the removed materials break down into excited ionic and atomic species. During this time the plasma emits a continuum of radiation. During this emission of radiation after or uh, during this emission of radiation within a very small time frame the plasma expands at very high velocities and then cools. At this point the characteristic atomic emission lines of the elements can be detected and this gives the information about what the specimen is about. LIPS is mostly used for bacterial detection. It's important to note that LIPS analysis does not depend on identifying the generic dif genetic differences between the species. It is rather the difference in the inorganic chemical composition of the outer membrane that is detected. So in summary, we have covered various culture based methods which include microscopic methods, MPN method, multi, multi time of flight and LIPS. In the next lecture, we will cover non-culture based methods.